So the Destiny 2 reveal trailer came out a couple days ago and I am extremely excited. So today I'm here to bring you 5 things that I don't want in Destiny 2. Now for all you guys that watch my channel, which the uh, majority of you probably don't, uh, I did say in a video uh, like a week or two ago that I was going to take a break from YouTube, and I am still taking a break from YouTube, but I will be making a video every once in a while just because there's going to be a ton of stuff going on in the gaming community, uh, like E3 for example, um, in between my breaks, so I feel like those are things that I just have to make videos on because they're just too important to pass up. So I still am on my break, but do expect a video from me every once in a while. So getting into the video, basically I'm going to be talking about five problems that were in Destiny that I do not want to make it into the next game. Some of these are just my opinion, but others are just general problems that the community had a really hard time with. Also, these are not ranked in any way, so one problem being ranked over the other does not make it necessarily worse. But getting into number five, we have repetitive quests, and I am including strikes in this as well for the Vanguard but I just felt like the quests and the strikes were a bit too repetitive. You know, they had their own story and own location, but I felt like you were just going to these locations and doing the same exact thing. You were constantly unlocking doors with your ghost, and you were always going to find a boss at the end and get loot from, which was cool and all, but it felt like I was just going to different locations and doing the same exact thing for the same exact stuff, and if Bungie was to make the quest line a bit more interesting and less boring and repetitive, then I can definitely see Destiny 2 succeeding there. Now this one is kind of my biased opinion, but at number 4 we have being forced to buy overpriced DLC, and this is kind of a 2 in 1 type of thing, because uh, what I'm talking about specifically is the Taken King, and when that DLC came out, number 1, it was extremely overpriced, it was 40 bucks, and I'm thinking like, why would they price a DLC this high? And I was researching it, and it said, you know, it provided a ton of content, and you know, even though it did that in a way, I just feel like Bungie shouldn't be asking you to shovel out 60 bucks for their new game on day one, and then asking you to shovel out another 40 with one of their DLCs down the line. And the two DLCs before the Taken King, House of Wolves and The Dark Below, those were cheaper, those were half the price, 20 bucks. And you know, that I can handle, that's something that most people can handle, that's the, you know, the basic price for downloadable content these days. But when the Taken King came out, I was so confused, you know, why is this DLC so expensive? And it did provide uh, some decent content, but I feel like Bungie shouldn't be asking for that much money for downloadable content for a game that was worth 60 bucks on launch. Now talking about the being forced part, what I was talking about earlier, uh, basically when the Taken King came out, it re basically replaced a ton of stuff that was in the game before. For example, Legendary Marks. Those were introduced in the Taken King, and for people who didn't have the DLC, Legendary Marks were still present. So you really couldn't buy anything in the tower anymore if you didn't have the Taken King. It's basically like Bungie saying, you know, if you can't keep up with the game, don't play the game at all. The Taken King also made it so exotics could not be equipped until level 40, which could only be achieved in the Taken King. So virtually you could not equip exotics without the Taken King, which was a huge downside. I was so pissed about this that I even wrote a letter to Bungie themselves in Washington. Of course I didn't get a response, but I was at least able to drown out that hatred that I had for them at the time. So overall, I just hope that Bungie doesn't take this route again, where number one, they price a DLC this high. I mean, think about it, this is downloadable content that we're paying for, for 40 bucks. And I think that's a little bit overpriced, especially for downloadable content, for a game that we paid for uh, on day one for 60 bucks. And I think all downloadable content, no matter how big or small, should be at least $20. That is the best price, maybe $15. I remember all of Call of Duty's DLCs when I played a lot back in the day. I remember all of their DLCs used to be around $15, and I thought that was a very reasonable price. And Bungie bringing up the price all the way up to 40 bucks seems a little bit ridiculous to me. And also I'm hoping that if they're going to release DLCs in the future like this, I'm hoping that they don't take away features that are in the game before and replace it with DLC content so that newer players that don't have the DLC don't have access to it anymore. And I found this really problematic before I had the Taken King, and it really frustrated me. I mean, like I said, I even wrote a letter to Bungie themselves, and just I hope Bungie doesn't take this route again. So up at number 3 we have raid matchmaking not being an option, and this is something like the last one, it's kind of a bias of mine, but it's something that I feel like should have been in Destiny in the first place as a choice at least, because you guys all know this, in Destiny you can't just hop into a matchmaking for a raid, you had to actually invite your friends to play a raid with you, 
and I kind of understand why they did this because you can actually work together better as a team because you have microphones and everything if you're friends and you know each other better but at the same time I feel like uh, raids could have still worked out if you could have just hopped into a matchmaking uh, with other people around your light level and I actually have something in the number two spot that kind of coincides with this one uh, that'll kind of really connect with it and if they were both features in Destiny 2 I think it would make the raid system a lot better uh, so yeah you heard it this number two spot is about raids as well but I just feel like overall Destiny 2 should have raid matchmaking because I think this will make raids more flexible and overall more people that don't have too many friends online at the moment can at least hop into a matchmaking with uh, a few other people around their light level and do raids that way. So at number two we have unpractical raids and I'm not a huge raid expert, I haven't played too many of them in my Destiny playtime, but from what I have played from them and what I have seen, I just think overall that the raids in Destiny were sometimes a bit too unpractical and if you guys don't know what I mean by this, uh, a perfect example of this is Wrath of the Machine from Rise of Iron. There was one part of the raid where each player had to step on uh, a certain platform in this one room to unlock the next part, and I thought that was a perfect example of unpractical raids. I'm not saying that they should technically make the raids easier, but I'm saying that they should make them more practical. What I mean by this is really just give us clues instead of Bungie just relying on the community to figure it out for themselves. Because let's be honest, in any game that we play, whenever there's a puzzle, we're always given clues or objectives or markers to figure that puzzle out. But in Destiny, it's a completely different story. Most of the time, we're having to go online and look up how to do these puzzles when we should just be able to figure them out in the game itself. So agree with me on this one, disagree, I really don't care. I just feel like Bungie should really implement more practical raids into Destiny 2 instead of us having to go on YouTube and look at a tutorial on how to do it because I feel like that would just be much more easier and I'm not talking about challenge in the raids, that is completely out of the question. I'm just saying that uh, certain objectives and puzzles in these raids should be more practical to solve. So finally at number one we have a random packaged loot and I felt like in Destiny whenever I really wanted this shader or this weapon or armor and I opened the package for it, I never got it right away. I could open a second package and I never got it right away. And I feel like uh, without random package loot, instead it could give us a menu of all the possible rewards from that package and we could basically select something from each category like a shader that we wanted or a weapon or armor that we wanted and pretty much predict what our packages are going to turn out to be and I think this would be a really awesome feature to have in Destiny 2 because I always felt like whenever I wanted something really badly and I never got it out of the packages that I worked really hard to get it was just really frustrating and I feel like we should be able to predict what we get out of our packages by selecting what we want when we receive them. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and also follow my social media in the description down below. And if there was something in this video that I did miss, be sure to put it in the comments, and I might even do a 5 things that I want in Destiny 2. But until then, I'll be seeing all of you next time.